Good morning. This is the flower of the Asiatic Daylily, which is my favorite weed. Weedy weed, not useful weed. Welcome to the spare, spare, square, spiral garden. All right. So we've got all of our lovely wild grapevines. The entrance to the garden is getting overtaken by Cosmos. I'm gonna have to pull these guys. Now, well, some other things too. Like a trumpet vine that really belongs over here. There we go. You grow that way. The deer have been eating the uh, Maximilian sunflower. Um, all of the sunflowers that I planted in the garden have been eaten. If you grew up reading Peter Rabbit, I'm afraid I'm on the side of the gardener. Not the rabbits. Here's our chicory. Chicory blooms first thing in the morning. Uh, usually by 10 a.m. it has closed up. The flowers are closed up. We've got a little bit of artemisia. The artemisia is now like waist high to me. It's a perennial and uh, it's one of my favorites. It's really lovely. Apple tree. This is the Jonathan apple. Ooh, we gotta get this guy off of him. This is a this is a relative of morning glory, but I think it's local. Um, and it will choke the heck out of anything it grows up. So you have to be careful, not let it kill your trees. Now I have been filling up the wee pond um, with water from the, from the rain barrels because it had gotten down to really low and it's, um, useful for insect life, good insects that need water. Um, and I hope that there are frogs that use it. I saw tadpoles in it once and never again. So mostly right now it's just housing a lot of mint. And, uh, and that's all right. Who knew that mint would grow so nicely in water? I checked, um, I checked online and mint does not harm wildlife or fish or anything if it grows in water. It gets used in aquaponics. So now we've got black-eyed Susans coming up. The yarrow is still blooming. These canna lily transplants are doing pretty well. Um, of course the Mugwort that I had pulled up here is coming back. Of course, it's going to do that. So just have to weed it. But I did not anticipate this um, peony falling the heck over. Look at that. Go the other way. Gotta keep pulling up trees. So I've transplanted some cosmos over here. Um, they looked very poorly at first. They just flopped over and were like, no, life is terrible. And they finally did tear up. See, look, look, these cannas are getting, turning real, out really well. Um, so I think I mentioned in my last video, my plan for here, that thing keeps falling over. My plan for the, what are these called? Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes. That's why it's hard to remember their names because there's two different names. So my plan for the sunchokes is to keep them covered because the deer will chomp on them a lot. Um, and I don't think urine was enough to keep them off anymore. So my plan is next year to grow a lot of cilantro in here because they do not bother the cilantro at all. All right, we're coming around the back side of the garden here. I dug up some of the elderberries, three of them, 
Uh, unfortunately, one of them I did not, and when I put it in the pot, I did not completely cover the roots. So two of them have survived. I'm giving them to my neighbor. Um, but if he needs more, obviously we have more. And look at these black-eyed Susans. Look at these elderberries. Look at the black-eyed Susans. Elderberries, black-eyed Susans. Elderberries, black-eyed Susans. Elderberry going to fruit. Here's the big elderberry tree. Fruit is still green right now. I think we still have some that are just starting to set. I don't think we have any flowers left on the big tree. Maybe way up there at the very top. Oh wait, some of the sunflowers are still with us. So these are some sunflowers that I had planted. I thought they got eaten up. I'm glad to say that they did not. None of the amaranth that I planted has come up. So I'm a little bit sad about that. Either that or it did come up and the rabbits ate it, which is a good possibility. I'm figuring maybe I can grow cilantro along here too. Here's where I have moved the um, mugwort. So the mugwort's going to grow under the south side of the elderberry. Let that fill in here. It'll grow out in the yard too, but we'll just pull that up. But I'm figuring I'll put cilantro here as well. I got to start using scent to help keep uh, pests out of the garden, the big mammal pests. This is, so that, that vine I pulled off the apple tree, that's what it looks like when it's young. I've been pulling up a lot of these lately. There's a little roly-poly bug. And this is what it looks like when it gets a little bit older. So if you see this, or that, it's a good idea to pull it up. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you what I do. Oh, look, we've got another Chinese princess tree. Luckily, these snap really easily. I mean, that's one of the things about the this tree is that it's very weak. The deer have been eating the tops off of the uh, black-eyed Susans as well. Not all of them. This one survived, I guess, because it got mixed up with, uh, with the um, hazelnut leaves. But yeah, where they're available, we're losing, uh, losing the Susans. Hey, I made a run. Maybe not all the Susans. I mean, these guys are blooming in spite of the fact that they got cut back. So this guy here, I'm very proud of. This is the milkweed. Um, when I tra first transplanted it, it seemed a little hopeless because it, it just wilted and died. And then it came back from the root. So this is its second year in the ground and it's doing really nicely. It's really close to the uh, can of banana quarter which is going to become the fig corner. Um, I'm gonna be putting a fig tree in here and probably another one about where that black canister is. The So this is the service berry, the little service berry, still suffering from the um, apple cedar rust. I guess I did not spray it as well as I thought I had. Around the outside of the garden here. Got Chinese yam, very choky. Um, I kind of sort of been pulling it up, but not regularly. I ought to. It's, um, I don't think the yams are edible. If they were, I would absolutely be digging them up and eating them. But from what I understand, they are not. Yams typically, if they really are yams, then they're, they're toxic. Um, the ones that are traditional yams from Africa, they have to be prepared a certain way. I think that it's a little bit like pokeweed, where you have to cook it a certain way and then it becomes edible. But if you don't cook it that way, then it can make you sick. Um, I don't know, I don't think it's deadly. I just think it's not, not gonna be good for you. Woo, spinning around. My asparagus doing nicely. Um, interestingly enough, the deer do not seem to be interested in asparagus. That kind of makes me happy. It's so pretty, it's so pretty, look. 
Look how pretty, you can just pet it. It's all soft. All right, coming back around. My boards are getting worn out. I'm gonna have to replace them with something. I'm gonna have to get bricks or blocks. Something that will last longer. They've done really, really well. They were old before I even got here. So, the uh, wild lettuce is blooming. Goldenrod's doing really nicely. This is the part of the garden I like the goldenrod to grow in. Um, it's a very beautiful plant when it blooms and it's a uh, very important food for a lot of butterflies. So I'm glad to have it in the garden. And I wanna show you over here, my raspberry is gaining ground. Um, I'm really hoping that it will continue to thrive and grow and get big. Uh, it's the reason I have this here is so I can always find it because it's, I think, five years old and this is as big as it's ever gotten. It's the coffee grounds. The coffee grounds are doing it a lot of good. I had a gooseberry over here. Pretty sure it is Gonsville. But yeah, I'm thinking fig tree here, fig tree down there at the corner. And I don't know, maybe, well then we've got this guy here and then the service berry up there. So that's a good four large, large plants around the edge of the garden. This is the southeast, southeast edge. The corners of the garden point to the four directions. So that's the south corner. This is the west corner. Uh, service berry, the big one. The one whom I'm always convinced that, oh, this is it, it's gonna die. It keeps hanging on. And I keep pulling up this stuff. The sparrow grass. And here's asparagus berries. Look at this. Did you know they set fruit? I don't know if the fruit are edible or not, but they sure are pretty. Pretty little orange berries. Pretty little berries. The crepe myrtle is doing pretty nicely. Um, this guy needs to come up here. I keep putting him there and he falls over again and then. Uh, I knew it would come back. The one that I had cut down before keeps coming back and that one I have to keep cut down because it, when it grows big, it, it damages the house, scrapes the house. So this one he, out here on this corner, you know what? My mother, every 10 years, would just cut them all the way back down to the ground and, and let them grow up again. Just every, literally, like, oh, it's been 10 years, chop. And then we have our Monarda over here. This is the old Monarda. I guess it's done blooming, but maybe this guy will bloom next. I'm gonna deadhead these, maybe that'll help. A couple of days ago, they were really pretty. I might put that in water. And I've been pulling up a lot of this nasty old grass. I don't know, is this crab grass? Is that what that is? I would believe it. There's always trees coming up. Sometimes I pull them up and sometimes I just strip the leaves. I don't know what works better to discourage them from growing. They're always going to be here. They're always going to do this. So, you know, this is a gardener's job is weeding. If anybody, tells you something, oh, this will beat the weeds for sure. You'll never have to weed again. They are lying to you. That's what marketing does. It tells you stories, tells you what you wanna hear. It's not real. <laughs> you cannot trust it. Weeds are just part of life. Here's another one of those vines. Hey, look, you can see all the leaves on that one. See, there's the first leaves. And the next, oh, and I pulled up another weed with it, the uh, Asiatic Daylily. Asiatic Daylily is my favorite weed because it doesn't really hurt anything. It will crowd out everything if you let it go. And I'll show you 
where it's done that. So if you want, and, and then it's extremely, extremely easy to pull up. It just comes right up out of the ground without any effort at all. Um, the glads along the house did not do very well this year. I'm wondering if they're competing too much with the, the native um, vines <laughs> who are providing us shade. Um, that's the Virginia creeper. Don't eat it. And that is the trumpet vine that produces those beautiful orange flowers that the hummingbirds love so much. And then these are goldenrod. But yeah, we only got two or three flowers out of this. I'm thinking I need to move these because they don't get enough sun here. They're doing really well over here where they're close, more full sun, or they were doing really well. Of course, this is the other problem with lads. They get top heavy. But see, these guys bloomed more and they bloomed longer. I should bring those inside and put them in a pot as well. This, whatever this is, has obviously gone to seed. I'm guessing it's some kind of a dock. It looks a little bit like um, dock. So we'll have more of that next year. Now we're back all the way back around to the beginning of the garden where the chicory is. So yeah, cilantro, cilantro. I'm picking these and putting them in under here and hoping that next year we will have a really nice cilantro crop around the uh, sunchokes toss those in. They don't like this netting. Um, you can see where they're getting wrinkled, but they also don't like getting eaten by uh, deer. Um, what are you going to do? I don't have any way to tent this up any higher. If I did, then they, the deer would be able to get underneath. So that's my solution for the time being. What was I going to show you next? Oh yeah. So somebody gave me some tomatoes. And I put them in the garden, watered them in really well. This is the Asiatic Daylily. If you see, I'm just barely putting any pressure on it at all and it comes right up. Um, it will completely take over an area, but the nice thing about it is it holds a lot of water. Even in the middle of summer, even when it's blazing hot, it will keep the ground moist. It's very nice. Here's our pokeweed. So the last few years we've had one big pokeweed plant. And this year we've got a bunch of little pokeweed plants. The deer also love pokeweed. You can see they've been noshing on them. But these mustard green sticks seem to deter them a little bit. I guess they don't want to poke around this in order to get a snack. But here's another tomato. Pokeweed going to seed. Isn't it pretty? He's so pretty. Pokeweed berries. Get out of there. There's another tomato. I had planted beans all around here. I have one bean plant. I'm guessing rabbits eat them. I had planted eight different ones. Um, four of them came up. One of them has survived. I don't know if it'll continue to grow. Rabbits and or deer have been eating the uh, violets. That one's made a comeback from having all of its leaves eaten off. There's another tomato. Tomato, tomato, tomato. So there's six here and there's one in the back. Blueberries, now that they're not covered anymore, they're doing a little bit better. This one has sent up a whole new shoot. Look at that, from the root. Stupid grass. Um, blueberry. This one's doing really nicely. Another new shoot. So they're only about three or four years that they've been here. They're really still developing roots. Here's my other thing, um, watermelon. We finally got some watermelon growing. Uh-oh. 
We had one in the middle and it's now it's gone. I guess it died. Shoot. So yeah, I probably need to get out here with a water bucket and water them really well. Watermelon need lots of water. And I'm guessing today I will probably harvest the mint. Check out the coneflower. We went walking at the park this morning and there was coneflower by the road. Never seen it there before, or maybe I've seen it once, but I've been here for 10 years. So I'm, I, I think they're working on introducing or reintroducing native plants because the coneflower is native to this part of the world. So pretty. <clears throat> <coughs> all right well that's the garden <clears throat> i figured i would go around the a different part of the garden today than i usually do i hope you enjoyed that <coughs> i'm choking on something on air i think yep the garlic <coughs> excuse me the garlic is um still gone to seed Oh, so this is where I pulled the cannas from, and look at this. These guys coming up. I guess I missed one. Two. All right. So you see, now, uh, look, it's only been a few minutes, and they're already starting to close up. Those are the ones we looked at when we came in. And these guys, <coughs> excuse me, they're bleaching, and sun bleaching in the sun and uh, closing up. All right, I'm gonna close this video. View the garden. What a mess, it's so pretty. Be well, y'all.